I am a sister and a friend. I'm a mentor and mentee. I feel like I'm a servant leader and I am a continuous work in process. That's me, LaShonda Holmes. Because I aged out of the foster care system as a teenager and I was also in North Carolina, they extend the age for um, when youth age, officially age out until around 22, I wanna say it is. So I knew I wanted to go into some form of service the whole time I was in the foster care system because I bounced around. When you're a teenager, it's hard to find parents who want to take in teenagers. They normally want younger children. And it also is a reminder of how much we have to invest in our young people and how much it matters. Sometimes they just need exposure or a mentor or the guidance. And some young folks are just waiting to have this one positive experience with someone like you or someone like me that can change the whole trajectory of their lives. At the end of my sophomore year, we had a career fair at Spelman College in Atlanta, Georgia, and across from me was a Coast Guard recruiter. I went over to say, hey, thank you for your service, thank you for coming to my school, and he explained to me the C-SPY program and all of the missions and different ways that I could serve. It was a place that I could thrive personally and professionally, and it offered a level of stability that I hadn't had in a while. Commander Menzi, I think, got her wings in 2005. I was just swearing in at MEPS around, around that time. And, um, and then met her. She's the reason I am an aviator. I mean, I had never even met a pilot, let alone a black female pilot, and somebody that I could relate to. And so when I went to flight school, it was never on my mind or it was never my mission to be, well, I'm going to be the first to fly helicopters. I just wanted to give it a shot because I saw an opportunity through Janine. I saw myself and her and I said, man, you know, the least I can do it is, is try to do it. And if it doesn't work, it doesn't work. No big deal, but at least I tried. Remind yourself of all of your hard work and dedication and studying and everything that it took for you to even get to this place. You know, we're all gonna have some days that are, are not so nice and we're like, hey, is, is this really a good fit for me? But if it weren't a good fit for me, I wouldn't be here. If I didn't deserve to fly, I wouldn't be flying. If I didn't deserve these wings, I wouldn't have them. But I do have them. And so I'm gonna rock it out and do the very best job I can in the meantime. Yeah, so I, I felt intimidated. I didn't feel like I had the knowledge base to even compete. But a part of that huge challenge that I thought, there was something about it that's like, you got this. Like, it's, it was such a big thing in my mind that like a big learning curve, it was so steep to me that I was like, we're gonna do it. So literally the, within that week, I got cable with all the news channels. I downloaded all the news apps on my phone. Uh, I had these oversized, like the huge sticky notes, and I had these almost floor to ceiling windows at my condo in Atlantic City. But no light was coming in because I had these sticky notes like all over the windows and one would be, you know, I'd have uh, the continents drawn, drawn out with little arrows pointing out of them like, okay, Boko Haram is doing this here. We have this new education uh, initiative going on here. It, it seemed like a huge challenge at first, but um, the more I educated myself on it, it didn't seem so tough. sitting outside of the administrators, like the C-suite. I was sitting there waiting for my interview, and I'm just looking at all this cool NASA stuff, and I just got chills. I was like, this is the coolest thing ever. I'm interviewing in DC at NASA, and General Bolden, the administrator of NASA, is about to interview me. It was just so much magic in the air, like space dust. When I found out that NASA wanted me as much as I wanted them, um, it was incredible. I, I had such an incredible year. 